Many Christians believe that by calling on Jesus, they will be saved. Mm. They base this belief on the scripture in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, and similar verses, which state, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Mm. By claiming that you are Jesus, are you not saying to people that they will only be saved if they believe that you are Jesus? Well, firstly, if we look at many of these verses, they were all quotations from the Old Testament of the Bible. Now, I wasn't around when the Old Testament was written. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I think the latest verse of the Old Testament were written more than 500 years before I arrived on the planet. So, so these verses obviously did not refer specifically to myself. They referred to God. Now, because many Christians believe that I am God, they then assume through this belief that I was being referred to by these verses. But if we look at, for instance, the Romans 10, 13, yeah. that verse is a direct quotation from Joel chapter 2. And this was written, you know, close to 600 years or so, even a bit further, I think, before I, before I came into existence. So, so they were referred to God. And in fact, it's interesting how the verses actually misquote the Old Testament to a degree. Because if you look at the original text of the Old Testament, wherever it says the Lord your God, it actually uses the Tetragrammaton, which is a, a series of texts that uh, can be translated to YHWH in, in our, our language. Now, the, the uh, Jews' language at the time, the Hebrew language, did not have any vowels. So, so YHWH could be Yiwah or Yahweh or yeah, yeah, it could yeah. be yours. Now, it, it was translated in some Bibles as Yahweh. Yes. It, it's been translated in other Bibles as Jehovah. Mm -hmm. So the actual quotation from Joel should read, Jehovah your God. Right? Now, anybody who read that verse who was a Jew would think that, that, that Jehovah, Yahweh, was their God, because that's who we believed our God to be. And, and, and that's how I was taught in the first century, that Yahweh or Jehovah was my God. The na it was the name of God, if you liked. And so that's why the verse says anyone who calls on the name of God or the name of Jehovah would be saved. In other words, anyone who recognised God, Jehovah God, the, the actual real God of the universe, which is what we called, the Jews called God at the time, Jehovah, or Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, over time, of course, we didn't use that word because it was too holy to be spoken. But initially, that's what, how we termed God, the, yeah. the ruler of the universe. And, and the verse in Romans was a direct quotation of that verse in Joel. So, so it would make sense then that it was being referred to as God, not myself. Anyone who calls on the name of God will be saved. Now, of course, uh, that then uh, uh, you have to ask the question, what does it mean to call on the name of God? <laughs> does it mean that all I've got to do is yell out Yahweh and I'll be saved? Obviously not, because according to my words that are recorded in the, uh, in the New Testament of the Bible, it required character development mm -hmm. and it required love, to, in development in love. So the reality is the verse itself is misconstrued by many Christians and, uh, and as a result they then imply that I... Jesus, you know, that you have to call on my name in order to be saved. Now, as I said in, in the book of Matthew, um, and, and I'll, I'll read this in Matthew chapter 7, I said that not everyone saying to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of the heavens. Mm -hmm. so, so, this is, so that is in Matthew 7. Now, now, so I'm saying, according to my words, I'm saying that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, not everyone who calls on my name will be saved. Yeah. And, and later in Romans, it says that everyone who calls on my name will be saved, <laughs> which is obviously a contradiction. Now, I never said that everyone who calls on my name will be saved. And in fact, I said that everyone who calls my name in the spirit world after they've passed, they call Jesus to them and I will go to them and if they have been practices of evil, of evil, I will say to them, it doesn't matter how much you call me your Lord, doesn't matter how much you call me your master, doesn't matter how much you call me the person who's your saviour, if you have practised evil in your life on earth, you will have to go through the consequences of practising such evil. Mm. Right? So, so the reality is being saved is not as simple 
as what many people would portray it to be. Now, some Christians then extend it and say, well, no, what it was really being meant was that by calling on the name of Jesus, you were accepting the vicarious atonement sacrifice, the blood of Jesus as your, sa as your saving. Mm -hmm. I must say categorically, no blood of mine saves anything. It can't even save a rat from death, let alone a human. Right? My blood will not save you. Your belief in my blood will not save you in the spirit world from anything that you have done evil on earth. The only thing that is going to save you is your repentance for what you have done, the recognition of your own actions that are out of harmony with love and then addressing these actions that are out of harmony with love in a loving manner so that you get rid of the reason why you did them out of your heart. That's the only thing that's going to save you. I cannot save you. My words can save you if you practice them, but only if you practice them. If you hear my words and don't practice them, then you will be just the same as if you'd never heard them at all. And in fact, you'll actually be worse off than if you'd never heard them at all because anybody who's heard the words and still doesn't practice them already has a degree of responsibility that a person who's never heard the words doesn't have. So, so any Christian who believes that they can call on any part of me, whether it be my blood, my body, my life, my name, or any other thing, and be saved, is completely out of harmony with what I've taught that is recorded in the Bible, but also what is the truth. Mm -hmm. And believing such a thing, all it does is damage you. It just damages your future for progression. That's all it does. So then you're not saying that people will only be saved if they believe no. that you're Jesus? People can and believe on Jesus and it won't change one single thing in their life in the future after they pass if they are out of harmony with love. It won't help them at all. Mm. There's many people who are in harmony with love who do not believe on Jesus until they pass and they are better off because they've brought their life into harmony with love. Mm. It's the love that's in their soul that dictates their actions and therefore dictates their future life. Nothing else, not their belief systems, not what they intellectually think or what they intellectually believe to be true. Mm. And there, so there's really a beautiful truth about your true nature and identity. What, what is that? Well, the, the reality is that this divine truth, I have been the first person on the planet to discover it. I'm not the only person to discover it. There have been many people since who I have taught the divine truth to. Many millions of people in the spirit world believe the divine truth that I've taught. And as a result of that, they have personally discovered it as well. And therefore, they personally have the same kind of relationship with God that I have. So, so that, is, that is the gift that God gave through our soul. And that is, the gift that God gave is that he gave us to the world to, to lead anybody who wants to be led into this condition of truth and, and therefore understand divine truth in their future and therefore benefit from understanding this divine truth. That's the only thing that I've given as a gift to the world. And by the way, there are many other people who have given many other types of gifts to the world. This one is mine. Yeah. Right? And, and I, only through being educated by God, have discovered it. And, and, and just as everybody else, I had to be told it by somebody. And in my case, I was humble enough and willing enough to be told it by God. Right? Now, you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe that I'm Jesus. You don't have to believe I'm the Messiah. You don't, you don't even have to believe anything I say. Although my suggestion is if you don't believe anything I say and you don't practice love, you'll soon find the consequence of that once you pass into the spirit world. If you are going to listen to what I say, listen to what I say first and practice love in your day-to-day -day life and learn how to change your heart to be loving, you know, Learn to accept God's love into your heart so that it transforms your soul into a loving creature. That's what I would suggest for people to do, not to believe in my name. Now, of course, if they believe that I am the messenger of truth to God, to God they will find life much easier in their future than, than they can currently imagine. But, but that doesn't mean that I'm special in any way. It just means that it, these words that I've taught have truth in them mm -hmm. and anybody who listens to these words will have the benefit of the truth in their life which is always a benefit that's joyful and loving yeah 
So I feel that, uh, again, many of these statements that people make um, about, you know, worried about whether I'm going to be controlling and manipulative or, or want power or glory or all these other things, you know, they're they not the purpose of my coming and they're certainly not anything to do with my desires, so they're never going to happen. And, and I suggest to them that while they want to believe in another Jesus that's going to do it, then perhaps such a person may come along uh, acting like that at some point in the future, I don't know. Um, he's not going to get very far because he'll be working against all of God's laws to do it. Yeah. Mm. And out of anyone that I would know or hear of, or you know, you're the least person that people need to be afraid of being manipulative <laughs> or taking power or controlling. And, exactly. And yet, so well, many you know, people... in even our own personal relationship, like. Yeah. I don't, I don't manipulate you in any way. And, and in fact, I constantly point out to you that you have your free will and you can decide what you want to do in any direction, even if that's to leave me or go away or whatever. So, yeah. so there's no uh, manipulation in me, even in my private relationships, let alone any manipulation with people that I don't know as well. Yeah. Mm. It's just this terrible fear that seems to come up in people. Well, I understand them having that fear if they have this belief about Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> the Jesus of the Bible is a terribly manipulative and controlling person, <laughs> according to the Bible. But uh, that's not my nature. Yeah. I understand that many other religious people from other religions might be afraid of that kind of a Jesus. Mm. And, uh, but, but it's certainly not the nature of the real Jesus. The real Jesus is far more loving than that. Mm. Uh, and even though he's not perfected himself again in this life through love, um, he's still far more loving than the person they're claiming myself to be. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Thank you.